everyone. Welcome back to Fine Arts Friday. This week, I want to talk to you guys about the Earth Art Movement, since Wednesday is Earth Day. In my opinion, Earth Day should be celebrated every day, so feel free to use these ideas all year long. So, Earth artists create works of art, like sculptures, outside using materials that they find in nature. They kind of use the landscape as their canvas. These artists know that their work probably won't last very long because of things like rain or snow or wind, so they usually try to capture it in a photograph. These artists truly value the process of creating the art over the product. In other words, their work is ephemeral. So here are some examples of different kinds of land art. You'll see that these artists use all different kinds of materials from nature. So sticks, rocks, leaves, this one looks like it was created with different colors of sand, so some darker, darker sand and lighter sand, I think. This one is one of my favorites, it's very famous, it's called the Spiral Jetty. So ice and snow have been used as well. So one of my favorite earth artists is Andy Goldsworthy. If you go to my website and click under art resources on Fine Art Friday, you can scroll down and you'll see a presentation I made all about Andy Goldsworthy. So keep watching this video to see how I channel Andy Goldsworthy um, and try to create some of my own earth art. Andy Goldsworthy thinks carefully about the environment in which he works. He spends a lot of time observing the natural processes that occur. to live on the Willimantic River. Right now, Piper and I are going to take a walk down alongside the riverbank. So I'm thinking about this landscape that I'm in, and I'm looking around for materials that I might be able to use to create some kind of artwork keeping in mind that it probably won't last very long because it's outside. So we've got the river flowing, which could knock things over. The wind is blowing. It could rain. It could storm. Who knows? It could still even maybe snow. Let's see what I can find. So I'm looking at this log and I can picture a triangle. I've decided that I'm going to try to create a triangle made of rocks on top of that log. To plan out my design, I started by building flat on the ground. As you can see, the bottom of the triangle or the base is wider or longer, and then it gets shorter or more narrow as you get up towards the tip. I use larger rocks at the bottom and then medium sized rocks and smaller rocks up towards the top. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the log in order to create that balance. The strong wide base will support the smaller rocks on top. I 
as you can see, the flow of the river is strong and fast. I'm not sure how long my sculpture is going to last, but that is exactly what makes it ephemeral, which means that it won't last very long. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed learning a little bit about the earth art movement. If you Google search earth art or land art, you'll find tons of examples of different earth artists and their installations that have really transformed different natural locations all around the world. Um, also check out my presentation about Andy Goldsworthy to learn more about his process. If you have Amazon Prime Movie, there's a documentary about him right now called Rivers and Tides that you might also want to check out. Now that it's getting nice outside, I hope that you guys get outside and try to create some earth art of your own. If you do, please remember to take a photo and you can send it to me at my email address or you can just post it here in the comments on our Facebook page. Okay guys, take care and I'll talk to you soon.